All right, we are going to talk about describing motion. So how in physics we describe motion. So motion occurs whenever there's an object that changes position relative to a reference point. In other words, if I'm staring at a dot on a line and I take a step forward, now all of a sudden that dot has changed position with reference to us, okay? So a reference point is just a point that we know and can measure from. So there's two different words that talk about um, measuring distance, and one of them is distance, and that's just how far away you've traveled from that reference point. So if you have a reference point that's, let's say, a dot, and you walk three steps from it, you can measure from the dot three steps to you. Now displacement takes into account both the distance and the direction that you've moved. So in other words, you would say, instead of just saying, I took three steps from the point, I say, I've taken three steps to the right from the point. Okay, and that gives me a direction and a distance from that starting point. Speed. So speed is a big calculation we use in physics. It's just the distance of an object travels per unit time in change in position. So what that basically means is we have our average speed, which is going to be represented by the variable v, okay, v, and that's going to equal the total distance, or d, divided by the total time it took. Now, if you think about any speeds we talk about, for example, I'm driving 60 miles per hour, that gives me a total distance divided by the total time it took me to get there, 60 miles, one hour. Okay, so there are different types of speed. We have instantaneous speed. That's a speed at any given point in time, meaning how fast am I going right now? Um, there's average speed. That's the amount of time it took to go a given distance. Um, and then there's constant speed. This is speed that does not change. Um, in other words, if a planet, or no, let's not say a planet. Let's say we shoot off a rocket in space. Remember, in space, and Things aren't going to stop going the speed at which they're going unless they're acting on by something else. So let's say we shoot a rocket and it just keeps going. That has a constant speed, okay? It doesn't change. So instantaneous speed, like I said, is a speed at any given point. Like driving a car and looking down at your speedometer. Right now I'm going 57 miles per hour. And now I'm going 59 miles per hour. Those are both instantaneous speeds. Average speeds are like taking a road trip, so it took me three hours to get uh, 300 miles, okay, then I'm, dri one, driving really fast, um, and two, that is the average speed, because I wasn't obviously driving that fast the whole time, I probably had to stop and get gas, or I had to go to the bathroom, or something happened, okay, so it's the average amount of time. And constant speed is a speed that does not change. So if you put your car in cruise control and you just drive that exact same speed for a certain amount of time, your speed is constant. So graphing motion. So we already learned how to calculate motion. Remember that's average speed is going to equal the distance traveled divided by the time it took you to travel. And when you graph motion, the motion of an object can be plotted on a distance versus time graph. So when you're graphing speed, it will often be plotted on a distance versus time graph, where the x-axis, remember that's the horizontal one, okay, is the time, and the vertical one is distance. The y-axis is distance. Basically, we can plot how fast we're going, and the slope of a line um, of a distance time graph gives us the speed of an object in motion. So by looking at this and calculating the rise over the run, okay, rise over the run, the slope, we can determine how fast that object was going. Great, right, I hope that made sense. Thank you very much.